Okay, this is a video about how to increase testosterone. And the first key point is that your body fat has an enzyme, aromatase, that will convert testosterone into estrogen. So it's better to be skinny. If you're skinnier, you'll probably have a higher testosterone. If you're fat, you want to lose weight. Um, best way to lose weight is just eat a healthy diet every day when the best diet is low fat, low protein, 100% vegan diet with no oil, and that helps to make people skinnier. Um, I give them tons of lectures on why that's the best diet, and that tends to make people rather skinny. The lower the percentage of calories from fat, the skinnier you get, the faster you lose the weight. So just eat the starches that are 1% of calories from fat, and that would be rice, bean, I'm sorry, rice, uh, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. Okay. If you want to eat beans, the lowest fat bean is lentils. It's about 3% of calories from fat. Black beans are about 4% of calories from fat. Um, garbanzos, you know, uh, also called chickpeas, are about 13% of calories from fat. Soybeans are like super high in fat. Yeah, I forget the exact percent, but it's in like the 30s, like 37% or something like that. It's really high. Okay, uh, what else can increase your testosterone? Well, first of all, you got to avoid all these estrogenic chemicals. There's a lot of estrogenic chemicals all over the place. They're in the tap water in big amounts, so you got to get a carbon filter to remove them. It's an organic chemical, so you can remove them with a carbon filter. Um, avoid estrogenics and personal care products. Basically, minimize personal care products as much as possible. You don't need deodorant. It just means you're a conformist, low IQ chump, okay? And you know, when you walk in a room, you say hi. You don't sniff each other's armpits. Um, and don't be wearing cologne, okay? It looks low IQ. You know, it's a low IQ guy that walks in the room and stinks up the place with a bunch of perfume, okay? Um, you know, I've known a bunch of guys that had tons of women, okay? Let me tell you, not a single one of them was a perfume guy, okay? Um, Usually women love a guy who's tall, big high status, uh, big money, um, or some other status marker in whatever the local environment is. So work on those things um, if you want to focus on attracting women. Um, what else? Personal care products. they got power benzoic acid preservatives. There's a whole bunch of estrogenic chemicals in them. Um, and, and just minimize chemical exposure as much as possible. You know, even laundry detergent. I've given a whole bunch of other lectures about how to minimize exposure to estrogenic chemicals. Laundry detergent is estrogenic. Dishwasher detergent is estrogenic. It goes on and on. Soaps, shampoos, conditioners, they're all estrogenic. Moisturizers. Okay, um, avoid estrogenics in food like soy, flax, um, aluminum. There's aluminum that gets put into things. And atrazines, you know, on the corn. So avoid processed food. Eat only organic. Those are some steps in a good direction. Exercise can increase testosterone, especially aerobic exercise. It also improves your physical appearance, raises your self-esteem, your confidence, makes it move in a positive direction. Make sure you're getting adequate sleep because lack of sleep is perceived by the body as stress, like psychological stress. And being stressed out is, is not sexy, okay? It doesn't, it's, it has a negative effect for your testosterone. It elevates your cortisol. It tends to make you fat. Okay, avoid caffeine because it just increases the same hormones, the cortisol in particular, as well as the catecholamine. So why mimic stress and, and it can lead to insomnia? All right, uh, avoid promiscuity. It's seldom talked about, but I've seen tons and tons and tons of ultrasounds of testicles for men with sexually transmitted diseases. And when you get the bacteria, they spread retrograde, you know, through the vas deferens, into the epididymis, into the testicle, you can, you know, then you get uh, bacteria in the testicles. They cause a giant inflammatory response, and that inflammatory response can lead to thrombosis, clotting of the blood vessels, the arteries and veins in the testicle, and you can infarct the testicle. I've seen tons and tons of testicular infarcts, and you're going to lose testicle, testicle tissue. You can even lose an entire testicle due to an infection-related infarct. So don't be screwing around with uh, the wrong woman. It's best to just not fool around with that many women. Find one you like and be happy together. Um, stay with her as long as you can, okay? Um, you know, be careful about who you pick for a future long-term uh, girlfriend or who you pick for a, a wife if you decide to get married. Um, avoid sleazy women. Even if you're wearing a condom, you can still get sexually transmitted diseases and get an epididymal orchitis, so you don't want to do that, okay? Unfortunately, women and men, especially women, are a lot more promiscuous nowadays than they used to be. So there's a lot of sexually transmitted diseases out there, tons and tons of them. And I got friends who are ob friends who have friends who are ob and they tell me the sexually transmitted diseases are off the charts. 
especially genital warts, but tons of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and yuck. And that can, again, plug up the fallopian tubes, plug up uh, the small uh, parts of the male reproductive system as well. Men are often symptomatic. Men can get a chronic prostatitis. Um, women can have chronic fallopian tube inflammation and become infertile without even realizing it at all. Um, as far as getting married, you know, marriage is a little bit unfair. I mean, I do think marriage can be very enjoyable. Those are some of the happiest days of my life when I was recently married and the kids were young and my wife was skinny and beautiful and, you know, making love a lot, being with the kids all the time. Those were great, happy days. Um, the only thing is, though, getting married, having kids does domesticate you to some degree. You know, typically they say you're middle-aged when you have to commute to work, you're married and you have kids. And, you know, your priority becomes your kids. To some extent, when you have kids, you live for them instead of yourself. So, you will you know, young kids often have a sleep problem or something, so you're up with them at night. You know, pretty common to, when the baby's young, still nursing or whatever, you have the baby in between mama and uh, papa at night, meaning that you're going to make the two-back beast a little bit less often. Uh, but the big thing is the lack of sleep. There was a great tennis player named Pete Sampras who won Wimbledon a bunch of times, and he was a fantastic uh, American tennis player. But he used to get teased that he really lost a step in a big way with his performance after he got married and started going down that route having the kids. So don't get me wrong, marriage can be a lot of joy, but it can also make you lose a step. So if you've only got one year left of your career or something, you're going for the Super Bowl or something, wait till afterwards to get married would be my advice on that one. Um... But don't get me wrong, I do think a happy marriage is a great joy in life. Uh, urologists that I've talked to, and I talked to some recently, they say all the herbals are bogus. I've heard other people say fenogreek might benefit a little bit, but I don't know if that was just marketing or if that's true. I tend to stay away from all this stuff. I'm always afraid of side effects from this stuff, and I doubt that it, any of that stuff works, but I don't know. Uh, pharmaceutical testosterone does really work, but, you know, I'm always careful about that too, you know. People say, oh, get the generic because it's cheaper. Well, maybe it's cheaper because the quality control is cheaper too. So you have to work that out with your own physician. But, you know, all this stuff for good general health is doable by anybody. So you might as well do that.